I'll welcome past here, you know, because <laughs> I also start the recording. So welcome to everybody who's here. It's so good to see everyone on this September day. <laughs> my, my granddaughter and I were both like, I feel sad when summer ends. But anyway, uh, and also welcome to everybody who is uh, viewing us online. We're so glad that you are tuning in. So we're going to start out with the doxology, and if you would like to stand up, you may. Oh, I thought we start with September.
was thinking, now we have to focus in, right? <laughs> Okay, uh, Proverbs, big surprise, chapter 10. However, first, I have got a couple friends who, uh, who uh, have had a rough week with their moms, a couple of weeks, well, a couple of months actually. Um, my friend and brother Sid, his mother passed over last night, his mother Mary. Um, and I'd like to mention her, uh, an incredible lady who was both mom and dad to Sid, my brother and friend. Um, I'm asking for prayers for Sid's family because um, they, had, they had just got her in the hospice and she passed over last night. So kind of like my mom, it's, it brought up some memories for me, too. Um, we'll, we'll open up with prayer, and that's one of them. The other is a, another musician who, uh, Paul, uh, and his mom, uh, is very likely, will likely pass over at some point this week, I'm thinking, if it hasn't happened already. Um, <clears throat> And I've been in discussion with, you know, to, online at any way, typing to both of them. Um, but um, these are these are women who were wise and responsible and uh, dealt with a part of life that a lot of people don't like to deal with, which is the end of our time here. Uh, it's a temporary end because we immediately start in something so much greater and so much more beautiful that we can't, we don't have a capacity to understand it. Scripture tries to describe it for us and we have pictures in our heads about what it might look like, but it is so, you're in God's glory and in your, you're in his time and in his peace and in his realm and in his kingdom. And he has given us a piece of kingdom here on earth through Christ Jesus his Son, and through the Holy Spirit who empowers the kingdom's activity in us. But that's just part of the, <laughs> that's just part of the incredible story of what, what love God has to us, what amazing grace God has to us. And we are fortunate, very, very many of us, to share time with people like Sid's mom, Mary, like my parents, I'm sure like your parents, like loved ones who have gone on, who have, who you have loved here, and who, who you miss from time to time. So um, I'd like to ask them, you to join me in prayer, uh, especially not that today is Memorial Day, to, it's Labor Day, but these people who worked hard for us. All those who have gone on before, so many of them worked really hard to give us what we needed to go on without them. Um, my father, when he passed away, we all knew exactly, precisely what he wanted in the way of burial, in the way of you know, what he wanted done with his body, in the way of all kinds of things. He wanted a memorial service, and we did one here, and Dad said, and I want lots of hymns, lots of hymns sung, sing them loud. And we did, by God. <laughs> Talk about a joyful noise, huh? A joyful noise. You don't want anybody go pouting and all this, you know, and I'm certain, I'm certain had he still, had he, had he still imbibed here and there, he wouldn't have minded a wake, but it was a, it was a wake anyway. It was a, but uh, so many don't like to address the end of life here um, because it scares them and you can't blame them. Um, a lot of us think about the ways we're going to go, and we will. Uh, William Shatner. <laughs> Say whatever you want about him as an actor, but he says, treat every day like it's going to be your last. 
Because that day is going to come. That's a precise quote, precisely the way he said it. Treat today like you're going to die. Because one day you're going. And, and that's true. Um, but a lot, a lot of people go on, a lot of people go on unexpectedly, and people are uh, scared of that, and befuddled. the family is befuddled, they don't quite know what to do. I praise the Lord that Sid's mom was one of those who had stuff arranged. Sid's family had stuff arranged. They don't have to go through the heartache, the double heartache now, of losing somebody so precious to them and trying to figure out what to do. Our time here is limited. This says so. Dying is going to be part of that life. Address it. Don't put it off. Because you're hurting those who will be here after you go if you don't. It's pretty simple. Well, what do we do? I don't know what to do. Oh, you know, of all the funeral services I have presided over, officiated at, I hear that so many times. It's not necessary. You can be wise, proverbially wise, with regard to our time here. Our time here is beautiful. And it can be well used. You can raise children to carry the torch for you, which is pretty much what Mary did for Sid. And others. Jess. Jesse. The grandkids. Our job here is to mirror. Not just mirror, but bring forth the light of God the light of Christ, the amazing grace God has given each one of us, and the love one for another, the care one for another that they have shown us, the sacrifice one for another, okay, that Jesus showed us. We're not necessarily good at sacrificing a lot. Some of us are very good at it. When I'm talking about time, I'm talking about sacrificing our own thinking about things and replacing it with thinking about others first. Esteeming others more than we esteem ourselves. Those kinds of gifts, those kinds of proverbial scriptural gifts that God, through Jesus, the words of Jesus, was trying to teach us. So that we may go on. Sid's mother, Mary, is going to live on through Sid, through her grandkids. And it's going to be a wonderful thing. For her, she's out of here. She's in a place so incredible and so beautiful we can't possibly imagine. Praise the Lord. And thank you, Lord, for giving us time to know people like Sid's mom. And have such people in our lives, another gift, right? Mm. Heavenly Father, we have a number of people who have moved on that we miss. We thank you for the time you have given us with them. We thank you for the place that you have prepared for them who do move on, who, who graduate. I mean, a real graduation. Um, so many friends, and as we get older, um, so many, so many of our family, some younger than us, some older, um, as your will is done on earth, as your timing for each one of us comes to a conclusion, help us look to you and lean on your everlasting arms as we just sang. Help us not look at death as something to be scared to death of, so to speak but a part of this life that you have given us here. Help us be responsible to those that we leave behind and making arrangements so that it's not an extra burden on them when we do go. And help us understand that we are promised, well, this hour anyway, hopefully until noon. Um, help
help us understand that. Help us treat it as the gift it is, and not like something that you owe us, because you don't. I thank you for those moms and fathers past who have brought us up in the way of your word. We pray for those who have not had that. Perhaps they have learned a, a different way of doing good things. Um, we know people like that too. Uh, whether of the body or not, I know not, as your apostle said, and that's really for you to judge and not us. Help us offer comfort and peace to those who are mourning. Help us offer grace, compassion, and love um, to all as we move forward in this life and as we understand what our job here actually is. I ask for peace of mind and heart for my friends and his family. For peace of mind for and heart for my friend Paul, who's going going through the same process or a similar process. And I thank you, God, for this life so grand on this beautiful world of yours that you created to put us on, which is an amazing thought all by itself. And I ask your blessing here on everyone attending today and those who are watching us and uh, out in uh, social media land, <laughs> but very real people there. May your word speak to our hearts today. Amen. 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 <clears throat> ah, excuse me. This job could be kind of tough on the case. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 10. <laughs> Starting in verse 7. Appropriately enough, the memory of the just is blessed. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> But the name of the wicked shall rot. Hmm. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating or a prating fool shall fall. Does anybody have a different word other than prating? Babbling. 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 The babbling brook. I don't mean to insult any brooks out there, and I know one in particular. We're not talking about you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Babbling. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's election time. You're going to have it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> the babbling is going to turn up to 11. Okay? And it's just maybe even 12. All right? Most volume now uh, 7 to 10. This is going to be like 12 this season, especially. The babbling shall fall. The wise in heart will receive commandments and know what to do with them. Know they should try to follow them. I'm not reading from Scripture, but this is what we're to do. If we're wise and we receive commandment from the Lord, we know what to do. Act on it. Follow it. But the babbling fool is babbling so much he doesn't even hear it. She doesn't even hear it. That's one of the adversary's weapons is to make us think we're too busy to pay attention to God. I've got all this stuff to do. Right? I have to be here at this time. I have to be here at this time. I've got to do this for this person. I've got to do this for this person. I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to. Guess what? You don't. Because that is a human doing. Not a human being. Well, I have to meet this person's expectation of me. No, you don't. 
whose expectation of you should you want to meet? The author of all these wonderful books in this incredible library that I'm holding in my hands right here and now. God's expectation of you is what you should want to meet. Not a person's. Oh sure, try and say that, Pastor, to a crying baby. Okay, that's kind of true, but it's also kind of not true. Right? Generally speaking, the baby won't die if you have to wait five minutes before you feed it. Okay? Most of the time, I would say that's probably true. Or, the baby won't die if you don't change his diaper in two minutes. You'll go down. No, you won't do that either. That's another thing. <laughs> At least the way my father told it to me. And I won't tell you what that was. All right. The wise in heart will receive commandments and know what to do with them. Know how to proceed. A babbling fool shall fail, shall fall, shall not. <clears throat> Pardon me. He that walks uprightly walks surely. But he that perverts his ways shall be known. He that winks with the eye causes sorrow, but a babbling fool shall fall. Winks with the eye. Have you ever winked at anybody? What does that mean? He that winks with the eye causes sorrow. Anybody take a wild stab at this one? We're reading it. Well, it doesn't matter because I don't understand it, so let's just skip over it, Pastor. Why is it here then? <laughs> huh? Sue! Oh, it's sort of a teasing thing. Huh? Huh? It's a tease. Huh? Kind of a conspir conspiration or conspiratory thing? Thank you very much. <laughs> Some days I have wonderful English, other days I'm not, I'm not so good with it to have. So. <laughs> What'd you say? What? What was that? Gladys, what did you say? Gladys? Well, our tongue gets caught on our IT. Our tongue gets caught on our IT. Winking, what, up, winking up the eye. What are the versions? I have four versions. So the wise. Okay, winking at sin leads to sorrow, it says. So we see what? Winking at sin leads to sorrow. Winking at sin. Ah. Or oh. whoever winks the eye causes trouble. Causes trouble. Huh? Get it now? Just we'll you and me, right? You. We don't have to have the other people on it. Laura. Sometimes it's a flirtation. Flirtation. Oh, my Lord. Good thing I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh oh, the crack on the ceiling just got a little wider. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's, we'll say, a conspiratorial secret signal between others as to how it begins. Yeah. What other. What, uh, he who winks maliciously causes grief, and a chattering fool comes to ruin. Winking maliciously. Winking dead is saying one thing and meaning another. Yeah. Yes. Crossing the fingers behind the back sort of thing. Crossing the fingers behind the back, winking. You're in a group of four people. You say, oh, I'm going, I'm going to this event. And you wink at one of them, meaning you're not going to that event. <laughs> sure, sure, I'll be in church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Well, I get that all the time. Guaranteed, next Sunday, I'm there, Pastor. God, I wish I had 10 bucks for every time somebody told me that. <laughs> You'd be attending my church in Ireland <laughs> that I built with my money because of people paying me that said that. Right? And I'd fly you all over every Sunday. 
Because that's how much money it would be. Maybe now you couldn't catch Okay? Yeah. Oh, I swear I'll be there. Yeah. And I just nod my head. I don't wink my eye, though. Because I'm trying to be compassionate. When I hear that, I usually don't say, you know what, you're full of crap, you haven't showed up in the last two years, you keep telling me every time I see you, and you're a liar. And I'm sure, because we're going out on social media, and I know I have my friends, and my friends, you guys who have said that to me, you folks who have said that to me, yes, I'm talking about you. And I'm sorry, that's the deal. And I'm not going to wink my eye. It kind of hurts when you don't do that, when you say, I'm going to show up, and you don't. No, there's plenty of reasons why you don't, right? Like you but you know why you're not here. And most of the time, you know, don't make promises. Don't make vows. I swear to God, well, there, you know what? There's a part in the Bible that God, where God says, do not do that. Do not take my name in vain. People think taking the Lord's name in vain has something to do with cussing. And they're wrong. It's got nothing to do with cussing. It's got everything to do with lying and being a false witness to somebody. I swear to God I'll pay you Tuesday if you give me five bucks today. There's any number of things that can happen between now and Tuesday where you won't be able to do that whether you really want to or not. One, you could die. Two, I could die. Or vice versa. But is, what good did your swearing to God do? I swear to God I'll do that. Don't do that. That's taking the Lord's name in vain, and that's a commandment, and stop breaking it, you guys. When you tell me, I'm going to be in church, be here, or don't feed me the BS. Okay, BS is a theological term which has got nothing to do with taking the Lord's name in vain, by the way. Stop it. Stop lying. It hurts. Lying always hurts. You can wink at it. Well, maybe a little white lie, wink. Don't do it. What does it say here about winking the eye? It leads to sorrow. It causes sorrow. It causes trouble. Trouble. Causes grief. Sorrow. If you can't be honest, shut up. Does this dress make me look fat? Yes, it does. Smack. Well, I learned my lesson there, didn't I? Does this dress make me look bad? I have to go to the Weiss market. <laughs> Does this shirt make me look fat? No, you already kind of are. <laughs> well, that hurts my feelings. Yes, but I didn't lie to you. The safest response is, no, it hasn't changed your appearance at all. No, the safest response is shut your mouth. And oh. grow. <laughs> well, what do you think about the dress? It's a nice dress. It doesn't look good, does it? It's a dress. You don't have to say a word. The message should be clear to those who are not babblings, to those who can hear. <laughs> Maybe this is a bad choice. One of my favorite movies is the remake of Ocean's Eleven, oh. right, with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. And Brad Pitt's at the bar watching something on TV, and George Clooney's behind him, and they're talking about the thing that they're going to do, rob the casino thing. And Brad Pitt's looking at the TV, and George Clooney's behind him, and George Clooney says, so I think we're pretty well set, don't you? And he just looks at the TV. And George Clooney goes, you're thinking we need a few more guys, huh? The kid still looks at the TV. The jerk's going to So I probably should go out and try to get a couple more guys, huh? Pitches looking at the TV, holding his drink. And Clinton goes, I'm going to go with some more guys. 
It's really funny. It's a really funny scene because Pitt doesn't move, doesn't say a thing, and Clooney goes through the whole thing and he didn't have to lie to his friend, right, Pitt? And then he didn't have to go, no, no, we should be fine. No, I'm scared to death. He didn't have to say anything. He goes, use your head in his silence. Don't wink at stuff. Don't try to justify stuff that you know is wrong. Don't wink at it. Because really, it's part of flirting too, right? But you're flirting with sin and you're flirting with danger. And you're flirting with something that can cause somebody a great deal of pain. Because we don't have any concept really how big our sin can grow. We're not that smart, first of all. But we can look in your own past, find out when this kind of a thing really hurt you, and you want to do likewise? No. No. Jesus taught you what to do likewise. Compassion, forgiveness. You know, if people didn't do this stuff, we wouldn't have to forgive quite as much, would we? If we hadn't done it first, we wouldn't have so much to forgive ourselves for. Right? The wise in heart will receive commandments. <laughs> Verse 11, the mouth of a righteous man is well of, is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. We went over that a little bit last week. Violence is never the answer. Sometimes it is a way, but generally not. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. That is a very meaty chunk of this book, the book of Proverbs. Hatred stirs up stripes, but love covers... Oh, this says all. Does anybody else have a different translation that doesn't say all? <laughs> hmm. Love covers how many sins? 70 times 7, right? No. No. Love covers only the sins that you feel comfortable with forgiving. No. No. All wrongs, all offenses. Love covers... Let's see, how can I make this work for me? Huh? No. How can I... Who said no? Oh, my Lord. Wow, back talking to the pastor like that. <laughs> Who brought you up like that, young lady? No, it says all. You know what that means? Every, Every single stinking one of them. Except the ones committed against me. Except the ones committed against Bill. Okay, who has sinned against Bill recently? Okay, David, stop it. There. How's that? I forgive you. Now, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, he doesn't want to tell the truth, so he's shutting up. Well, I'm supposed to apologize when I sin against somebody. We of we members of AA, and I just blew my anonymity, but that's okay. Um, we make amends every chance we get, but we're told to look at that very carefully, because sometimes trying to make an amend to a certain type of person can create more hurt than the original problem. And that's a judgment call, and that's a pretty huge thing. And it can weigh on you for a long, long, long time, and it can be very heavy. So a good plan would be do do not sin, sin not. Be angry and sin not. It's okay to be furious with somebody, but don't sin against them. Mm -hmm. Don't sin against yourself because then you won't have this weight on you where you have to try to make an amends later. Mm -hmm. And that won't be good if you try. That's hard. 
And sir, do you see how disgusting and messy sin can be? Do not wink at it. Do you see how much of this here in here is making you have to think about stuff? It's why it's a proverb. You're not supposed to just be able to read this like you do a Hallmark card. Or even an editorial comment from the penny saver and laugh your guts out. Because they're so crazy. This is serious stuff. Every bit of this. And we've heard it how many thousands of times. We've heard preachers on TV talk about it. We've heard other others teach it here and there. And we sit there like, yep. I was at church today. What did the pastor talk about? I don't know. I was just there. That's not what he wants this for. He wants to feed you because you've got a tough week ahead. You have to go out there and do stuff with these people. By the way, my wife went, daughter and granddaughter went to the lake this week, and I think they brought the chicken. If you remember, the, you didn't bring the chicken? There wasn't any chicken. There wasn't any chicken, okay. But I let them bring whatever they wanted to. I didn't hold back and say, you can't have my speedy chicken. That's not for the lake people. I let them bring whatever they wanted. I had to learn. This had to teach me. And it seems like such a slight thing, but it was serious. You didn't. Don't take the bacon. I did not. I said, take all the bacon you want. And we took a pound of it. You did. So we didn't try to take See, the bacon. even I can learn. We didn't try to take the bacon. Woo! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Guys, this is vital. You know why? Because we don't know it. We like to think we do, but we don't. We don't examine ourselves through it. We think we're fine. There's a reason why some people call church bodies a hospital for the sick. Hmm. Jesus said, I have come not to call the righteous. Right? But who? The sinners who needed healing. The sick. Well, I mean, when Jesus said that, how many righteous people were on the planet? Well, the Apostle Paul says none. There was one. Just him. Yeah, but he used to just kind of skip up and down occasionally. He was, you know. <laughs> I have this picture in my head of my Lord Jesus Christ when he walked the earth and it gives me great comfort he's walking along the street and he's whistling and he's out of tune because he was one of us for a while only he was absolutely more and he knew this inside out, upside down, and backwards. The reason why he whistles out of tune is because he didn't want to really draw too much attention to himself while he was here. But his words, he wanted people to hear. And let's face it, if the governor's on TV, how many of you guys are going to watch him and see what he says? Yeah. Okay, two. Oh, that's good. I like to read what he said. I don't like to watch it. Are you going to pay attention? Or are you going to come up? Are you going to come away with it? For are you going to say, "Well, did you hear the governor said?" And I've heard this over and over again. A lot of people come up and tell me this is what the government said. And I've heard that too. <sighs> what did the man say? Did you ever play telephone? Yeah. What did the first person at the the nine say? 
and by the time you get to the ninth person, it has nothing whatsoever to do with what the first person said. What did Jesus say? You should go into this book and find out for yourself. And when you run across something like he who winks at with the eyes causes sorrow, and you don't understand it, you shouldn't just go, oh well, I'll skip that. Because you know how pathetically stupid that is? Do you know what you've missed eating here? Do you know what tool that could give you as you go out there and deal with those people <laughs> who are actually just like you? And you're supposed to show them what? Love, Love compassion, grace, forgiveness, and you're supposed to have this light with you? Can you do that going out acting like you normally do? Seriously? Or are, is there things that you need to change? This book is full of stuff that you need to use. This book is full of stuff that you should understand. You should want to be students of this if you have any place in the body of Christ. It is a sacrifice you should be willing to make all the time. You know what, Lord? I'm stupid. I don't know what this means. Help me. Spirit, lead me in this. Help me find out. Help me ask other brothers and sisters. You know this bit of scripture? How many of you guys discuss the Bible with each other? When, you know, not during, just during Bible study. How often does that happen? Honey, what does this bit of scripture mean? I don't know. But you're supposed to be the pastor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, let's go through it. <clears throat> I have a friend who said, you use too many words. I'm sorry, I'm going to. You need to introduce them to me. How do you describe what's in here? Well, sometimes you're going to have to use too many words. Be prepared. Don't be angry. Right? You can be a little angry, but sit not. <laughs> Right? Not everybody's going to get it at first. Well, that's not what I heard. Remember Archie Bunker and all in the family? It says so right in the Bible. He said that, and it would immediately follow something that was never, ever, ever in the Bible at all, ever. Right? Anybody know a saying like that? The woman's place is in the... The marketplace, outside of the house, according to Proverbs. And I can get into it later if you'd like. Honest to God, it's what it says. You have to vote one party. It says so in the Bible. No. Taxation is theft. It says so in the Bible. No. What else we got? Anything. Here's my favorite. The Lord helps those who help themselves. That is probably one of the biggest lies ever said. Because it is. If anything, this entire work, this word of God, shows you the truth. And the truth is the exact opposite of that. Sorry, he wrote it, not me. I wish sometimes the other was true. Work to understand what is in here. The wise in heart will receive this. Heavenly Father, help us work on ourselves and our understanding of what you're trying to tell us. Help us come to you with An empty notebook that we're ready to write on when you tell us things. When we have understanding, when you give us the understanding of what you've written here, help us rewrite it so that 
we can better grab on to it. But help us be inspired by the word you have originally written and not pervert it. Help us not wink at our own failings and go forward and change them. Help us make the amends that we need to make. Help us shut our mouths and not lie. Help us be careful not to spread lies just because we happen to like the word lie at the point, at a certain point in time. Help us be true to you. Help us be true to your sacrifice and what it is supposed to mean for us and our responsibility to those who are lost. There are people dying and they need you and they need your healing and your wisdom. Help us not deny them that by our own shortcomings and our own sinful actions to you and your word. Father, help me do a better job today than I did yesterday in representing you in this world. And I ask this, Father, in the name of you, Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, the kingdom you have given me to do the work. And I ask these things for each one of us. Amen. Okay. Thanks for showing up, guys, out there. We're going to close as we do uh, communion. And we'll do it.